There are roughly 10 trillion gigabytes of digital data on Earth right now, and people create 2.5 million terabytes of data every day in the form of emails, photographs, tweets, and other digital files. Many of these files are kept in exabyte data centers, which are massive storage facilities. An exabyte is 1 billion gigabytes, which is the equivalent of many football fields in size and costs about $1 billion to create and operate. Many experts believe that an alternate solution might be found in DNA, the molecule that stores our genetic information and has evolved to store enormous amounts of data at very high density. All of the world's data might hypothetically be stored in a coffee cup full of DNA. Welcome to today's episode of AI News. In this episode, I will show you how with the help of emerging artificial intelligence systems, we will soon be able to increase our data storage capabilities by up to 10,000 times, how exactly this will be done, and finally, when we can expect the first consumer-oriented devices that make use of this technology. We need new storage options for the vast volumes of data that the world is producing, particularly archival data. DNA is a thousand times denser than even flash memory, and it also has the unique feature of consuming no energy once it has been created. You can write DNA and then save it indefinitely. Scientists have previously proven that pictures and pages of text may be encoded as DNA. However, a simple approach to choose the appropriate file from a pool of numerous DNA fragments will be required. Bathe and his colleagues have now proven one method for doing so, encasing each data file in a 6 micrometer silica particle that is tagged with short DNA sequences that expose the contents. The researchers proved that they could properly extract individual pictures saved as DNA sequences from a batch of 20 photos using this method. Because of the large number of labels that could be utilized, this method could handle up to 1020 files. Text, pictures, and any other type of data are encoded as a series of zeros and ones in digital storage devices. The four nucleotides that make up the genetic code, A, T, G, and C, can be used to encode the same information in DNA. G and C, for example, may be used to represent 0 and A and T, respectively. DNA has a number of other characteristics that make it a suitable storage medium. It is highly stable, and synthesizing and sequencing it is relatively simple but costly. An exabyte of data stored in DNA might fit in the palm of your hand due to its great density. Each nucleotide, equivalent to up to 2 bits, is roughly 1 cubic nanometer. The expense of manufacturing such huge quantities of DNA is one stumbling block to this type of data storage. A million terabytes of data would now cost $1 trillion to write. Bathe believes that the cost of DNA synthesis would have to drop by six orders of magnitude to compete with magnetic tape, which is often employed to store archival data. Bathe predicts that this will happen within a decade or two, comparable to how the cost of storing data on flash drives has decreased drastically in recent decades. Aside from the expense, Another major drawback of utilizing DNA to store data is the difficulty in distinguishing the desired file from the others. What happens if DNA writing technology advanced to the point where it is cost-effective to write an exabyte or zettabyte of data in DNA? You'll have a pile of DNA, which will consist of a billion files, photos, videos, and other items, and you'll need to locate the one image or movie you're searching for. It's like to looking for a needle in a haystack. PCR is now the most used method for retrieving DNA files. A sequence that binds to a specific PCR primer is included in each DNA data file. The primer is introduced to the sample to locate and amplify the target sequence in order to extract a specific file. However, there is a risk of crosstalk between the primer and off-target DNA sequences, which might result in undesired files being extracted. Furthermore, the PCR recovery procedure necessitates the use of enzymes and consumes the majority of the DNA in the pool. You're essentially burning the haystack to locate the needle since all of the other DNA isn't amplified and is thus thrown away. Last October, geneticist George Church and his team from Harvard Medical School in Boston, Massachusetts, demonstrated how to encode a snippet of music from the video game Super Mario Bros. in the transitions between runs of identical synthetic genetic bases, then retrieve and play it back on a computer. Olgika Milankovic and her team at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign developed a DNA punch card strategy that stores data in NICs in the DNA backbone. 
They used the technique to store a copy of former U.S. President Abraham Lincoln's Gettysburg address as well as an image of the Lincoln Memorial. Cold data, data that is written once and accessed seldom, if ever, is the low-hanging fruit for DNA data storage, according to Twist Bioscience CEO Emily Le Proust in San Francisco, California. This is due to the fact that DNA is stable for a long time, yet data access, through sequencing and data processing, is sluggish. DNA has previously demonstrated that it is capable of handling large amounts of data, but not in peer-reviewed journals. Another Alliance member, Boston-based DNA storage startup Catalog, stated in 2019 that it had encoded all of Wikipedia into genetic material using its DNA writing technique. Twist also revealed last year that it had saved an episode of the Netflix show Biohackers. Others see bigger picture possibilities, such as Church, who urges academics to go outside the box. Consider fruit flies that can use their DNA to capture video of everything they see, or human tissues that can store physiological data. It's generally foolish to attempt to apply a new revolution to the old way of thinking, he argues. This type of DNA encapsulation, according to Bathe, might be beneficial for preserving cold data, which is material that is maintained in an archive and not accessed frequently. His lab has spun out a company called Cache DNA, which is working on long-term DNA storage technology, both for DNA data storage in the long run and for clinical and other pre-existing DNA samples in the short run. While DNA may not be feasible as a data storage medium for some time, there is already a pressing demand for low-cost, large storage solutions for pre-existing DNA and RNA samples from COVID-19 testing, human genome sequencing, and other fields of genomics, Bathe adds. The Office of Naval Research, the National Science Foundation, and the United States Army Research Office all contributed to the study. The need for data storage is increasing at an exponential rate, yet conventional storage medium cannot keep up. The majority of today's data is saved on magnetic and optical media. Despite advances in optical disk technology, storing a zettabyte of data would still need several millions of units and a substantial amount of physical space. We must pursue major breakthroughs in storage density and durability if we are to retain the world's data. Because DNA is incredibly thick, up to 1 exabyte per cubic millimeter, and has a half-life of over 500 years, it is an appealing option for archiving data. While this is not currently feasible owing to the current state of DNA synthesis and sequencing, with developments in the biotech sector, these technologies are fast improving. We believe hybrid silicon and biological systems are worth significant study given the coming constraints of silicon technology and end of Moore's law. Biotechnology has benefited greatly from advances in computer industry silicon technology, now is the time for computer architects to think about integrating biomolecules as an important component of computer architecture. Each file had barcodes that corresponded to labels like cat or airplane. When the researchers wish to extract a certain image, they take a sample of the DNA and mix it with primers that match the labels they're searching for, such as cat, orange, and wild for a tiger image or cat, orange, and domestic for a house cat image. The prices and speed of reading and writing DNA, which must fall even lower if the technique is to compete with electronic storage, are among the hurdles to making DNA data storage ubiquitous. Even if DNA does not become a common storage medium, it will very likely be utilized to generate data at totally new sizes and to store specific sorts of data in the distant run. However, Koshori and Ehrlich point out that the new method isn't yet suitable for widespread usage. The 2 megabytes of data in the files cost $7,000 to synthesize and another $2,000 to read. The cost is expected to decrease with time, but Ehrlich believes there is still a long way to go. Writing and reading to DNA is also rather sluggish when compared to other kinds of data storage. As a result, the new technique is unlikely to catch on if data is required immediately, but it would be more suited for archiving purposes. On the other hand, who knows? Perhaps one day, those massive Facebook and Amazon data centers will be replaced by a handful of DNA pickup trucks. So, what is your opinion on this entirely new approach to storing digital data? Do you see any promise in it or do you believe that this will fail just like all the other radically different approaches that were promised in past days? Please tell us your opinion in the comment section below. I would love to hear what you have to say about it. Thank you for watching AI News. 
We consistently report on the newest technologies that are shaping the future of our world. We'd appreciate you subscribing and watching our other videos. See you around and take care.